Welcome back and today is uh, Tuesday 23rd of August at 10.30pm uh, Eastern Standard Time and welcome to those of you joining me from Asia and I believe you will be Wednesday 24th of August at 10.30am Singapore Time. Welcome back. Now today the market is kind of uh, gone real haywiring, <laughs> gone real crazy. So what I want to do right now is to really dissect what the market is telling us and then we go on to uh, pay our greetings to all of you who are students as well as new visitors to the uh, YouTube thing, all right? So let me just uh, get my drink ready. So today the drink for the day is this. <laughs> Cola, salsa, lemon tree. All right. So welcome back, very happy to see all of you and you know, um, I just returned back from uh, dinner with my classmates and interestingly one of them asked me, do you mean that you go into live stream and you just talk and you can just analyze the market on the spot? I said, yeah, there's no script in front of me, I don't prepare for this live streaming, essentially we're ready to make an informed decision every time we look at what the market is telling us, right? So, I'm going to do this one round of demonstration in front of all of you. And really, I just came back from the shower and then uh, right here, seated in front of you, uh, ready to sit, right? So, here we go. We just adjust the camera. Now, the step involved is really simple. Um, first of all, we always take a check on what the market is telling us, right? So, here we go. Let me just switch over right here and then one second. And let me switch back right over here. So the first thing I always tune into is my all-time favorite CNBC.com website, right? So obviously you can see in front oops, oops. <laughs> kind of a mess up again. Hang on a minute. <laughs> um let me switch back, let me switch back. Um, I know why. Um, so today, uh, you know, there's a warning that came out from Apple. Please go and update your latest software on your iPhone, especially on your iPad, as well as on your Mac, right? So I did a switch and that's the reason why all of my things uh, in the computer is kind of a central reset. There's a very powerful virus going on right now. To infect your phone and take over control of the phone, right? So, while you're watching me right now, please go and update your software on iPhone, iPad, as well as your iPhone and Mac. Okay, I think I'm ready, ready, and uh, just one more time I check through, I'm ready, ready, yep. And here we go, let me just share this screen again. Um, where am I? Here we go. Okay, we are good. And check this out. Okay. Here we go. This is CNBC.com. And typically what I like to do right over here is first thing load up and let the market tell me what is happening. Okay. So obviously the market kind of closed all the way today uh, with the NASDAQ, all those index 30 and an S&P 500 all down. And in fact, right over here, the stock futures are still following the S&P 500. The third day is the If you are looking fresh in the market right now, together with all of you. Fresh, fresh. We had a big class today. And after the class, you know, I came back to my room. Just rest a little while and then we uh, took a long walk. A one hour minute. <laughs> one hour, uh, 60 minute long walk. Uh, with my classmate, Girish. And then we arrived at the restaurant and we met up with other students. We had a great, great dinner and then I come back here, back to my room, had a quick shower and right now I'm watching live in front of you, together with you at the market, okay? So what I want to do typically is I go straight over here and, you know, this is like, what am I searching for? I'm searching for an idea Every single day to try out at least one thing. And I believe those of you who are subscribers of the Ghost of the Ancient Meditation yesterday, guess what? 
require a great trade, and the trade kind of uh, spike up today, all right? So <laughs> this is the beautiful uh, beautiful part about firing on trade every single day. Uh, today, I'm going to hunt for one more, and I'm going to look for two. Uh, market developments that should inform me where we are headed. China is facing another power crunch. Uh, this time it's likely to be different energy stocks are on the road, but this one has a balance sheet to beat that more. All right, so, uh, what I think about China is very simple. China is all about energy. The moment China goes full steam on the production, guess what? Consumption of oil will, will shoot up and the sun goes up. Supply right now is completed, the price can go up, right? So look over here, energy stocks are on the road, but this one has the balance sheet to keep that on. So it's to be this, right? We're gonna take a look at this one later on, but this is not the key key of what I want to share with you yesterday, all right? So I will go over as well under the latest news. I kind of zoom in and kind of start scrolling down, I want to know which is the most important information that's going to influence the thinking for today. Okay? Uh, this is the energy stock. I want to take a look later on. I just kind of uh, prepare it first. Continue to scroll down. What is the market telling us today, right? Uh, Trevor says, proving winners like Focus Line still have time to reinvent themselves, right? What the rise in natural gas measures mean for three of our energy? I'm interested in energy stocks. I'm going to open this up and take a look at the chart now. And we're going to go down right over here. So, not sure. Kind of a uh, down most of the retailers out there, urban outfitters. Uh, they're going to take a big hit today, right? So, I'm uh, not really interested in that. But then, that's all looks vulnerable to such energy stocks in the morning. Right? We're going to take a look at this in the chart now. And we will move on now. Okay? Uh, what else is interesting today? Not much. Overall, everyone is just interested in Jerome Power about his upcoming interest in height. So, this is a quick interest in height. We have a great conversation uh, with one of my classmates, George. Uh, he's telling us, he was telling me that the world is not going to expect like a 50 basis point. This is basis point, and um, I'm expecting like about 100 basis points. And so, the only thing will be a tiny basis point, and it will have a 60 and 25 basis points. That is why we all work with people that are available for FOM community. Okay? So, what is going to trigger the interest rate will be very, very much on the second year of September when the value of labor statistics will release the CPI index. CPI data, which is what we call inflation data. Uh, we came from an all time high 9.1, and last month we got to 8.5, and um, next month, uh, as in this month we dropped to 8.5, and next month in September, are we going to drop below, below 8? If we can keep at 7.8, 7.9, then we we'll give us some building space, and I believe with that, um, so, you guys are hearing me soft talk. Oh no, you're gonna have the uh, mic problem again. Can you guys hear me? So, I'll do Okay, the problem. Um, okay. I think I know why I don't know if I log into the wrong Wi Fi. Hold on a second. Okay, how about right now? Are you hearing me better? Uh oh. Okay, let me just see. Okay, can you guys hear me better right now? Is it uh, much, much better? Just let me see your response on the chat chat and I'll know uh, we are back on track. 
I think I know the issue already connected to the no, to the <laughs> to the wrong um, Wi-Fi. All right, so there's a secure Wi-Fi and a, and there's a guest Wi-Fi. Just now, I do not know why I got a lock into the uh, guest Wi-Fi. Okay, everybody, good. Wow, what a fantastic audience you guys are. All right, so um, uh, let let me just finish connecting the dots. All right, it's kind of a lost track. So there are two three uh, three trigger events. Number one. If the inflation data pops up, we are hitting below 8%. Uh, I mean, I would imagine like 7.9 or 7.8%. Bearing that, uh, you know, all the efforts to bring down inflation is in full scale right now. All right. Now, George, my classmate, highlighted to me that, hey, you know what? You've got to consider the constituents in the basket to calculate inflation we have 30% coming out from real estate. Now, the data from the real estate is not going down. All right? So we have to depend on the other 70% in the basket of calculating inflation to bring down inflation. Okay? So if we hit, before the FOMC meeting, we, if we hit about 7.8 or 7.9% inflation, inflation rate, then I believe the Fed can kind of uh, relax and introduce a 50 basis point hike on 23rd of September. In the event, we are kind of floating at 8% or 8.1%, then obviously inflation is still very, very high. This will be the trigger, I believe, for the Fed to continue with a 75 basis rate hike. What if inflation goes 8.5% and above? That's it, holy mama. We're going to go back to, in fact, we're going to introduce for the first time 100 basis point height. So these are the three scenarios, very, very clear map out in my mind. And thereby, we need to understand right now, what can we play from today until the window of the FOMC? Are you all with me right now? It is very mind-boggling, all right? Because everything that we're playing, that we are playing right now, it's going to have a shadow cast over our heads. The shadow of Fed Chairman, the, Fed, the shadow of interest rate hikes, the shadow of inflation data that's going to go beyond control. So that's the kind of environment we are navigating in. And with that, I bring back once again where we left off just now. Okay, We are looking over here for ideas that allow us to navigate in this kind of crazy environment. So, I mean, if you are looking like AMC, Ape, or Bath, Bed, and Beyond, I'm not interested to make money when everyone is losing money. All right, so I kind of, I, I made up my mind. I don't want to look at that anymore. How about Starbucks, a Comeback Rally? And you see, not many company names are even being mentioned at the latest news. Can you see what's happening here? In the past, we can see very specific energy, uh, individual names, sectoral names, rotation names, growth value stocks, and so on, but not today. So thereby telling us the market is uncertain because CNBC itself would have already curated the best stocks for us to talk about. So if that being said, earlier on, I clicked on three separate links to open up three different files, right? So I'm going to go through with you right now, and from there, we're going to pick off our most powerful idea for tonight and we go fire off the trade. First thing first, energy stocks are on a roll, but this one has the balance sheet to beat them all. Ticker symbol CTRN. All right. So let's go down over here and talk about Saudi Echo. I'm going to push down and here's the mention of the three great companies. Here we go. Oops. ExxonMobil, BP, Chevron, all right? Out of these three, uh, Warren Buffett is driving Chevron like crazy, crazy. It's a continuous two consecutive quarters of uh, insider purchase on Chevron itself, all right? CVX. The other big contender will be OXY Occidental, and that already triggered up to 50% acquisition. I think the upcoming 100% acquisition should be announced, all things clear, before the midterm election, right? So this is where we got a good feel. But I'm interested in this guy with the strongest balance sheet, right? 
And this is being mentioned right over here. Hold on a second. The Saudi Amroco will raise capital expenditure over the coming years to drive unchanged growth ambition. All right. So we kind of uh, push down right over here and continue the storytelling about Amroco. And is this the one that we want to play? Let me tell you, no. No for me. Uh, even though shares of uh, Saudi Amroco that's traded on the Saudi Stock Exchange has moved up around 23.4% this year. I'm really not interested. I'm only interested in US-based energy stocks. That must be driven by very, very big purchases from the insiders, okay? So the first idea, gone. <laughs> I mean, I kind of am moving quite fast right here because I want to cover as many ideas as possible and then you guys kind of handpick the one that suit your risk reward profile, okay? The second one, here we go. Right now, we're going to look at some more, more uh, familiar names, okay? Which are the familiar names I'm, I'm going to look at right now? Here we go. What the rise in natural gas prices mean for three of our energy stocks? So this is under those who are part of the Jim Cramer Club. Now, he's always talking about, you know, it's Devon Energy. And uh, today, he bring on board two other companies. Uh, that is Cotera, CTRA, as well as Pioneer Natural Resources, PXD. Okay? So why... The, the thesis for these three companies. Cotera, CTR, CTRA, ticker symbol CTRA, has natural gas and oil and natural gas liquids. Okay, so the independent gas and uh, oil and gas producer gets more than half of his revenues from natural gas. So this is the team. If you want to play to chase about natural gas, Cotera is the one that you'll be looking at. How about the next one? I'm, I want to skip kind of a skip this and I want to go straight to pure, pure crude oil energy based company. That would be Devon. Oil 2.97 billion or 72%. That is the major portfolio of this company, Devon Energy, all right? DVN. So for DVN, it's in the same family as Chevron, ExxonMobil, BP, Occidental, kind of in the same family. But the question is, who is the lead investor among the insiders? All right, so there is a major consideration right now if I'm looking at DVN. Next, we push down Pioneer Natural Resources. And again, this, this is a crude play. Uh, oil taking 75% of its portfolio. All right, so you got some great ideas right here. And you can go and look at the charts later on. But what's important, we start filtering out these companies, writing down their names and getting prepared to do the detailed analysis on our software, okay? So I think I'm done enough for this. Done. Finish on energy stocks. Uh, I think we got three very, very good names right here. And then we kind of end off with my favorite discussion about Warren Buffett number one stock, all right? And that's none other than uh, Apple itself. Here we go. Let me just move this up. Now, the thesis for Apple come of kind of a fall into different camps. There's a camp that's very, very strong on Apple. We are looking at the ecosystem of products that's going to be launched, which include iCar. I'm excited about iCar. I think this is, will be the mother of all cars, uh, especially it's being uh, designed and launched by Apple itself. Okay. But let's take a look at the balance view, what the chart strategies are telling us. And they are issuing out a big, big word right here, a warning for the whole market. Come on, every time these analysts are like doomsayers, all right? So what is the big deal? Here we go. Short-term fatigue that could have repercussion for the entire stock market itself, all right? So let's hear what they have to say first, and then I'll put on my thinking cap and to connect the dots, right? So here we go. I think Apple is vulnerable, so by definition, that makes the indices a bit vulnerable. It's such a large part of them. So it's talking about a 50-day moving average and so on. I'm not interested in the technicals. I kind of move down right here. Now, this is what you need to see, and later on, we'll plot out against our 2020 bottom left chart, all right? 
So you are floating right here on a 170 and it's going to break into a high high. And what other things that this doomsay is talking about? And I mean, I kind of look through. It's just very, very technical based. Uh, looking at certain numbers, that's about it. They are not talking about the business. That's the problem with all these analysts. In fact, I should call them the chartists, all right? They are not talking about the business. So let me move this guy out and we dive straight into the chart itself, okay? So here we go. Let me open up the chart chart. And by the way, how's everybody? Um, I want to see who's in the house today, all right? So let me just open this up first. One second. And here we go. Wow. This is Apple chart. Right. First thing, kind of a uh, let me get rid of my uh, caption. One second, done. All right. So first thing is we kind of a uh, zoom out to our bottom left, two thousand twenty. Move around here, and then you can straight away see. Once we do that, this is the box that we need to capture. All right, the 150 box. And the 150 is a very, very strong line simply because of this guy. This very, very strong guy right here. All right, It's just cutting many, many candles there and thereby estab establishing this very strong support line. But I'm going to zoom in right now over here. Okay? There's a little dip. This guy can't wait to break away. Now, when I say break, break away, it means like this. We're going to draw like a 180 rectangular box right here to 160. This is the range. Now, why this range is so important is because of this. Here we go. It is touching on the 200-day simple moving average line. It's kind of just sitting on top of it, right? So 160 is a clear line of sight. And if we take the middle of this rectangular box, we are looking at 170. So we formulate our thesis starting from this point. This is where the way we look at things are very different from the rest of there. Okay. And of course, we can formulate out, go and look at the software data. You can see so many insiders pushing, uh, supporting Apple itself. All right. I think it's ready, ready for a big um, explosion up, breaking the 180 as the strong resistance line. Okay. So we covered this, and this is what CNBC has to offer to us. And you know, I'm not even diving into the data side of things to show you what the data is telling us. I want just to give you a quick view. How much time it took for me? Less than 30 minutes. All right. So maybe this is the time I bring out all of you and pay our greetings. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, if you are watching live right now, can you please say something on the uh, chat chat? <laughs> and as you know, around this time, my mind start to go zombie already. You know, this is this is the time I need to touch my bed. <laughs> so <laughs> please come and say hello to me, and uh, I will say the pretty. Wow, who's in the house? We have uh, Watchin, Jeanette, Elton, Jalo. Wow, thank you very, very much. You guys are good. John Tran, Jeffrey. And you know, I'm not getting like <laughs> specific, specific to on the individual stocks. I realized that I don't want to be like, you know, um, let me explain later on that. Okay, so that's Calvin. Hello, Kelvin. Good to see you and welcome back, all of you. Amanda, wow, long time no see. <laughs> so you like popping in and out of the classes, okay? So thank you very much for participating in the chat. But let me come back. I want to really go specific, all right? And um, you know, I'm going to bring out my secret little black book. Hang on a minute. Ugh. Right over here. Ding. And today... I fired off a very, very important trade. Uh, those of you who have, followed, who have been following me, you will know 
uh, what's the price I fire off, and then we can dive deeper into the discussion, right? So let me show you the final trade for tonight. We covered energy stocks, we covered, covered Apple. And tonight, it is high time we need to cover this guy. Ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. We need to take a double, triple, quadruple look at Tesla. And because this guy right now is sitting on a 200-day simple moving average line with a beautiful flat line. This is a right now flat, flat line, right? The price that is trading at 889.75. And you know, when I talk about that number, you guys know what I'm thinking about already. <laughs> All right. But what is the trigger for and the thesis for Tesla? All right. I want to show you this very important data. I, I'm not too sure how you guys uh, follow and track religiously, but this is something that, you know, you need to cultivate this very important habit, all right? So let me just show you what I'm looking at. Here we go. We got a very, very important tweet today, right? And we're going to discover this tweet and to understand its repercussion on Tesla's stock price. Here we go. I'm looking at none other than Elon Musk. And he's going all out to taunt, to tease, to torture Twitter. Give a little whistle. He's encouraging all the whistleblowers out there to step up and step out. Because obviously there's something wrong with the company called Twitter. And this is my trigger. Ready? Here we go. So same prevalence was shared with board, but the board choose not to disclose that to the public. Let me tell you, this is criminal. If the board of directors withhold key material information, they're going to go to jail. Let me tell you, this is not, not a joke. This is damn serious, all right? So let me read out to you this particular article from the Washington Post. And of course, as I'm reading, you guys can check your reference across different other media. Four people familiar with the company's processes for spam detection who, like others, spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive internal matters, told the Post that the company keeps several internal tallies of spams and bots known as prevalence. Can you see this is euphemism? They use a word to cover up the real, real description, which is actually spams and bots, all right? Across the service, beyond the number supplied to Wall Street. The Post also obtained an internal document which was redacted, redacted to hide the numbers showing that spam prevalence was a number shared with the board. The board is in trouble, man, I can tell you. The document was supplied to the board at a meeting. Zacco attended according to two of the people. And who is Zeko? Today, he's the official whistleblower of Twitter. This guy is a super geek, super hacker, recruited by Twitter, and recently, he got fired. He's stepping up, stepping out right now to whistleblow on Twitter. This is going to have a material impact on the judge decision overseeing the case of Elon Musk and Twitter, all right? So I look at this, it seems like they are on the path of winning. I'm talking about Elon Musk itself, all right? So what should we do? So this is what we're going to do. You're going to look back here and see the behavior, any like strange giveaway, clues, hidden gems, um, and we're going to do this discovery together, all right? So here we go. Boom. This is Tesla. And what have you got right now? You have a case against Twitter that's going out super duper strong at this moment. And the stock price loves, loves to trade at the $900 range. Okay? That's the first clue. The second clue... And I'm not talking about just the stock price price, right? I'm talking about this cluster here. All right, first clue, I use an arrow to depict. 
the second clue I use an arrow to show you that the candles just can't wait to break out of the 200 day simple moving average line. Okay? And tomorrow, as on Wednesday, number three, step three, we're going to have the stock split. 900 divided by three, the stock price will drop to $300. Okay? Now, what does that mean? It simply means that the moment the stock price has dropped from $900 to $300, it will be able to attract a new breed of traders with limited capital to own the shares of Tesla. This is what we are waiting for. Okay? So I've given you three very important clues. I'm not going to tell you I'm going in whether to buy stocks or to buy options. Nope. Uh, this is reserved for those who are part of our Don't Stop Believing trade notification, right? We're going to uh, fire off the trade right after this. So I want you to keep in mind today we covered three very important theses that can only be traded in this crazy environment, all right? Please remember, in a no normal satirist paribus environment, it's so easy to catch the spikes. Now the challenge is we have to be so careful to prevent us from stepping into time bombs, all right? So... Let's do a quick summary. Today we covered energy stocks. Uh, we given out you given out to you some very good names. We covered Apple. Fantastic. We do our challenge against the chartists. And number three, we're looking at Tesla, whereby the case for Elon Musk is looking more and more positive because of the whistleblower coming out from Twitter. All right. So we link these three ideas together. I want you to apply the thinking. Before I fire off my WhatsApp trade notification to you, you attempt to think which stock should you enter right now. And that will sum up our discussion for tonight. Thank you everyone so, so kindly of you for joining me right here tonight. Really, really excited to see you. Uh, by the way, you know, I'm a super, super, um, typically at this hour, super, super fatigued already. <laughs> And they tell me I've got another 24-page journals to read up tonight. And I I can only wake up in the morning to do so. Right? Not, not at this hour. I'm just conking out, conking out. Okay, and what's the food for today? I think today I will go a little bit healthy. Oh, I'm eating this mama food. <laughs> okay. Wow, the, 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 the touch, touching of it and feel of it is really... Just feels so great, all right? So, um, and I also just finished my, uh, just started my drink on this uh, sparkling water on lemon. And tomorrow, I think I got some in interesting things to share with all of you, all right? So thank you very, very much to, for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>